Hey, what's good, Smite fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smite Pro League. I'm Tom Battinger. That's going to be the best taco. And this is the Mix and Match Day. Monday is interesting. First of all, I hope you watched Esports Weekly. We covered everything that happened in the past. Now we're looking towards the future, and it's the final week of the summer. You get the best of both worlds today, starting with uh, Europe, actually. Going to be mm -hmm. SK taking on Team Dignitas, and it's been a bit of a rough split for those guys over on SK Gaming. They're really just looking for anything that can give them that little bit of a resurgence heading over into the fall. Yeah, really excited to see at least the other teams. I'm not quite sure how uh, SK will be able to pull themselves out. But Dignitas, of course, today looking for the victory. And uh, we covered clinching scenarios as well. A lot of things working as far as these European teams are concerned. A couple of different miracle situations, in fact. But one thing's for sure, Dignitas need to clutch out this set. Otherwise, their hopes for contending at that land are, uh, I'm pretty sure, automatically removed. Uh, very important as well. As we looked at that schedule, you'll notice that Wednesday is missing. No July 4th broadcast. We're all going to go hang out on the beach, and Hindu Man's going to hide in a dark closet. Tuesday, we'll have three matches, and Thursday, we'll have three matches. And we're actually going to start at 1 p.m. tomorrow and Thursday. So make sure Tuesday is early, Wednesday is hot dogs, f Thursday is early again, and then Friday, we're back to normal at 3 p.m. It's not just hot dogs. It could be burgers also. That's true. We're, the, we're also going to be able to grab some burgers. Uh, earlier this week, I got a chance to talk to Half Devil. His return to the Pro League is a big deal. He's been helping out SK Gaming. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Hey, what's up, Half Devil? F Dot here. First of all, just welcome back to the league, man. How you doing, bud? Uh, thank you. I'm um, doing pretty good, despite all our losses. Uh, we're, we're hanging in there. Hanging in there. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a little bit tough for uh, for your team, but well, let's let's focus on the positives. I mean, you're you're generally a positive <laughs> guy, and you're, you're kind of in here. So you took a step away from the game. You were previously at a pro level. Took a step away, came back into the uh, the minor league, and now like immediately in the pro league. What's that like? Sort of getting back into everything. Uh, it feels really really good. Like it was always kind of a dream of mine to make it into the pro league and stay there so right now i'm just kind of if you can say i'm f i'm fulfilling it uh i hope that i stay here i wanna right now i'm probably the weakest support i would say and i don't want it to be that way i don't want to stay like that i want to get better i want my team to get better I want all of us to get better for sure and you know i think you guys have been making strides right you're still zero wins unfortunately but i mean it's my job to look deeper than that and i've seen some some better play i think that uh you've certainly improved the team in your own right in the support position but what do you think are give me two of the biggest things that plague sk or keep you guys from really finding the victories um i feel like our decision making is somewhat like cluster like when it's like probably the most crucial ones which is the early game, which is a lot of why we're getting like, a lot of the time we're not even getting to the point where we can like actually play the game because we just did like mistake here and there and like the game is over already. Like a sex game behind in 10 minutes and there's no coming back from that. So decision making is probably one of our flaws at the moment, which is probably one of the easier things to, no, nah, I wouldn't say it's not probably one of the easier, but like it's, it's just like a learning process to fix that. And I guess just like synergy as well. I am, even though I'm like with the team for like a month and something, a month and a half maybe, but it's still like a learning curve uh, where you get used to each other and how you play with each other mainly. Absolutely. Because you still don't know all the ins and outs. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you do have a little bit of a history with the guys, but it's been a long time. No, man, it's, it's definitely tough. You guys are in a, re, uh, a rebuilding period is basically what I'm looking at. You know, you fresh back to the game almost, and then, you know, coming in, taking over for another support. Uh, you guys are going up against two heavy oppositions, right? You've got uh, <laughs> energy and, 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 uh, and Dignitas to really face off against. So these are obviously learning experiences. What do you plan on taking away uh, from this week's matches? Uh, all that I can, honestly. If it's just like, it's if it's meta, getting the hang of the meta, because the meta is always shifting. Mm -hmm. It's always a, kind of a rhythm, or a, a riddle, rather. Um, just picks, ev everything you can, just like combinations. I guess like, we do know 
some of it, but like there's a reason why energy is like almost undefeated and why they are so like strong just aggressively and they're doing it so well like and everything you can get from those teams it's just it's a world worth learning basically yeah certainly a little bit tough there but good luck in your matches this week and thank you for joining us buddy i'll get you next thank time. you half devil coming back to the league and certainly <clears throat> understanding you know where he is in the in the grand scheme of things on a lower end team right now but the goal isn't to bring home the w just yet it's more looking down the line but they do have to play Dignitas no matter what today. It's never going to be easy going up against one of the considered considerable European powerhouses, Dignitas. Sure, they might not be in that top two as of right now, but that's always prone to change. You never really know what can happen during the last week of the split. Things can get pretty spicy towards mm. the end, and if any team's looking to turn it up another notch, this is probably one of those teams I'd look out for. Dignitas likes to end the split strong. Very true, and Dignitas, although they are... They've tweeted that they're not going to land. Technically, they are in land contention, but it's uh, kind of a pipe dream here. Today, I expect them, like you said, even though they have said that we're not really looking to go to land right now, I still expect them to come out here all guns blazing, playing some real stuff out here. This is not a team that ever really kind of takes it easy. It's also just one of those little things like pride on the line sort yeah. of matters. I mean, do you really want to be the team, especially when you're considered so high up in the standings, at least to the public perception, to fall against SK, a team that has clearly had a lot of struggles throughout the spring and summer splits here in Season 5? Yeah, I mean, these guys are still on the up and up. I will, I will still say that. But I think we can definitely attack at how small the steps have been for SK Gaming. Getting rid of support player, whoever was there for a while, and then for play, uh, tossing in Half Devil. Positive, but I think a long term positive. Huda Best did everything he could in his power at yeah. the time. I think that That's from fair. the beginning when SK picked him up, they kind of just acknowledged it from the get-go that he was just meant to be a placeholder as a support. He was never really meant to be the long-standing one. And then prior to that, you also mm -hmm. had Badja kind of in the same position. They thought that this was going to be the change that they needed, and that didn't really work out. So it's it's just been a, a long series of struggles for SK in mm -hmm. terms of solidifying a support for that role. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, outside of Half Devil, who are you really throwing up into the SPL? Because I can't really think of too many supports in the minor league for Europe that could possibly take place there. I mean, Half Devil was the minor league call-up. I don't. I don't think support is where SK needs to be looking anymore. And, you know, this is kind of reminiscent. I think 10 times out of 10 that I bring this team up, it's a joke. I'm sorry, Wolfie. It reminds me of Thirst from way back when, where Thirst was a four-man team with a solo laner. First they got banned, then it was a new guy, then it was another new guy, then it was a Kronos main, then it was another new guy. They never had a solo laner, so they never could get off the ground, and that's why they will always be the butt of the joke that we have here. SK feels the same way where they just they, they, they never had a support until right when they picked up Half Devil. And now he's doing it, but I'm looking I'm looking in the jungle taco. But I don't necessarily want to pinpoint everything onto fails. And I know that we've seen so many hot and cold sets yeah. from fails. It's almost like you want them to pick a temperature by now. But <laughs> it's it's really difficult because sometimes you, like, you can't tell whether the boiling water is coming from mid lane or if That's it's fair. solo lane spilling over. I mean, I think there's a lot of little add-ons that we don't always get to view from our like overhead perspective. And I, I think that... With everything in mind, Fails is probably doing the best he can to supplement sure. the sort of jungle playstyle that Lobster spent so much time really building his name off of. That certainly makes sense. Well, we'll see if we'll see if Fails and the boys can do it today. Team Dignitas taking on SK Gaming. SK will have the second selection. And uh, yeah, no, like I said, I, I've been looking at the jungle. It's just I think that mid lane Lobster has been consistent. I think that Funball has been consistent, and Half Devil working his way into the mix i think you can definitely look at that right side whether it's jungle or or solo side that's uh that's that's an issue for i'm me. just gonna throw this out here this is gonna get real complicated too trying to, <laughs> to pick a side trying to, pick, trying gotta, to, i gotta well, pick you, which side you, i want to turn dabbing? to are you dabbing here i don't i don't know what i'm doing it's like a it's like a halfway robot <laughs> kind of thing but well, you look like aggro at a dance party we'll get it together eventually so <laughs> I, I this isn't just for fun by the way guys i want to clarify i did have a, a bit of a car accident this past week and you're over, overall you're yeah I'm, I'm good to go i'm fine it's just a little bit of a of a neck sprain so 
I, in case you guys are wondering, it's <laughs> it's not me trying to practice my dance moves up here. I just do you want me to match don't you? really have much of a choice. Do you want me to match you? It, it, you want to make me feel better? Yeah, I'll do that for you. It's actually a little bit fun once you get used to the swiveling. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. Right now, <laughs> the bands are in. No Artemis, no Sylvanas. So Dignitas taking the push composition out of there. Uh, no Thoth guy, no Athena, leaving Jean-Cui as the first selection overall. It's been a while, friends, and I just want to say I love it. <laughs> oh, although the way Janice and Chernabog, so Jean Cui the Unkillable being met with globals on globals. Don't even want to talk about it. Jean Cui <laughs> is one of those gods where if you keep him suppressed early on, you don't really pay much mind to him in the mid to late, but he kind of forces you to take note of him at a pro level of yeah. play. These guys know how to stay relevant in terms of experience and farm, that gold value only building onto his itemization. Probably can expect a bit of a hybrid build here. I'm also definitely expecting that to be for variety. Yeah, variety. Not only not only just because the tanky mage finds itself suitable for the solo lane, but variety is just a strong pilot of the Jean Cui, and it's just going to work hand in hand, like you said. Expect a hybrid build. Gem of Isolation, almost undoubtedly, going to be built. Discordia and Sir Cat hanging out with Jean Cui, whereas SK will round out their draft, their first half, with the Ratatasker. So. Global, global, global on the side of SK. Heavy mobility. If if there's any direction that I don't think we've really seen SK venture too far into, I think the global mobility is definitely one of those aspects they haven't really tried sure. to utilize. And part of the reason is as much as global can be beneficial, it can also add on to team chaos because then you've got members of your roster who can go from every which direction. You've got to find that centralized voice of command mm -hmm. so that your team fight execution can still be there. I'm really keeping an eye out for Chernobyl because to me, this is definitely a very heavy fails game in terms of the yeah. shot calling. This isn't really so much, yeah, we're looking at Lobster. This is fails and needing to be very decisive in saying, Lobster, ult left, ult right, let's gank the solo or mid and making sure that the Chernobog knows exactly where to go. What I really like about this SK draft is I, I, I think the way to fight against Jean Kui, Jean Kui compositions are very all in. I push my ult, I push my buttons, and we're going ham. And if we don't win, we probably lose. SK have so many eject buttons right here. Oh, Jean-Cui ulted, Charnabog flies to the other lane, Janice puts a hole in the wall, Ratatasker goes up into the tree. There's a lot of options to get away from the Jean-Cui right away. And so I think this is a nice response to what Dignitas have drafted. It, it feels wise because it's not so much them having to u like use their abilities to get their teammates out or like using actives like right. they were building. or just elaborating that they have their own forms of self-peel, and, and that's pretty critical going up against a jean Cui composition. I'm expecting Dignitas to try really making sure that uh, Variety just opens things up so that the Kumbakarna gets a guaranteed epic uppercut. There's also the isolation factor there. I'm also anticipating that Lobster's gonna have to watch his positioning, even Probably. though Giannis is very fickle to catch. It's also one of the situations where if you get hit by Kumba, uh, that's probably your team's best form of disengagement, and you never know what's going to happen next after that. Yeah, the Circat also going to have heavy chase down potential as well. So Dignitas have drafted themselves a mid to late game composition centered around Jean Cui, just looking to be that guy. Whereas SK are worried about running away from Jean Cui. If they do, they'll be able to reinitiate. We'll see if that's going to go the way they planned. Game number one, SK Gaming taking on Team Dignitas. Let's get going. Thanks a lot, Tom and Taco, of course. Myself and Tony will be bringing this set. Obviously, it's all about can Dig try and make land? This is the first stepping stone for them to try and do so, and then hopefully rely on results as well. They need a little bit of luck to qualify to land. To be at a point where you were about to win all of Spring Masters land to a point where you're barely able to qualify to the summer, uh, definitely a different turning point. I think, like, Ding Toss are going through some growing pain still. Who do you guys at home think will win this set? Last week, we did see SK get as low as 4%, I believe, that was pretty of cool. the vote. I'm wondering if it's going to be the same again today. SK Gaming struggled, obviously, this year so far, at least through the summer split. Not managing to find a single set victory. Maybe today's the day against Dignitas, if they can make things work. I think Dignitas are going to play with a furious fire under themselves, oh, trying yeah. to qualify to land. They want to at least get the first step towards the land, and they need to do it here with their picks, because... The Jean Kui to be prioritized this early on. SK Gaming need to look at Variety and be like, all right, listen, 
Different starts to the builds now with Breastplate getting a little bit of a higher bump, at, the, mm. at least in the TR1 version. So you're not getting that 20 physical protection, making it a little easier to gank this mage solo. Now, Ducky as well, though, going for a bit of a different build here, going for some magical resistance early on in this, just to make sure he doesn't take too much free damage from Variety as this one continues. The Enchanted Kasari obviously builds into some more magical defense, but a bit of protection. The 20 protections will be helpful here, Tully. Definitely going to be transitioning towards that because you're looking for a lot of boxing in the 1v1. One, you're trying to really get to Jean Kui low enough to be able to allow the global pressure from fails to show up and look for the hot cleanup. That's all route out from Trick's Tank there. And some extra poke damage from Arkill. Won't be doom and gloom just yet. Fun Baller does have plenty of health potions and multi potions in his inventory, but the quicker they can burn those down, the more susceptible he will be to some ganks. It's not a bad idea to look for that poke, considering if you're putting Trick's Tank in a defensive position or an offensive position, then he's going to be looking to follow up with his blink eventually, whereas Half Devil can easily negate that with his shell, and that's something Dangerous House needs to keep in the back of their mind to look for some offensive invades. Yeah, definitely on the left-hand side of the map, you will see some pressure from Dignitas, as you can expect. 15%! I believe SK may be able to take this one. We'll see how that works out. Dual lane definitely pressuring for Dignitas. Mid lane, relatively even. Slight advantage for Dig in terms of the wave clear being a little bit quicker earlier on. And now on the right-hand side, though, all square for the time being. That 15% a lot higher than it was against Rival yep. last week when the Fire Minions actually took out the game. Fire Minions OP. Fire Minions are definitely OP. Ice Ice Baby, you know, and Fire Minions. Little rad boy doing yeah. the work that's necessary to win. Now we do see in the mid lane as well, Zero starting off with that boots rush. We've seen this a couple of times. The extra mobility, getting those boots online a little bit quicker, foregoing actually the blessing, the mage's blessing, which you see a lot of the time. So he's looking to get these boots online relatively quick, totally. The reason is, I think, is because around level four is when you hit that 900 gold spurt, and you see a lot of players go back to base for boots too at that moment. Well, Lobster would be able to go back, sorry, Zibzit would be able to go back to base and get full boots at that oh, stage. A little bit of pressure there on the dual lane with the blink, forcing out the beads from Fun Baller, about 150 second window. And just a touch on the mid mage boots composition, even before level four, just now hitting level yeah. four was zeros, but right during the speed buff time is when you want to get those boots completed so you can make the defensive rotation if your own speed is being looked at. And we'll see what ends up happening with that as this continues, because we've seen a lot of Soul Reaver rushes for the most part out of many Discordias. Most of the time, no, it's not really the boots, but with the boots this time around anyway. Meanwhile, supports both going the same sort of direction. Blink Shell, though, with the differences in relics. And it looks like Trick's Tank going for the extra boots rather than Chal Oracle's Chalice. So Half Devil making sure he's got these early wards available for himself in the dual lane. But how are you going to use them if you're constantly sitting under your own tier 1 tower? If you're looking for the rotation, you're leaving Fun Baller exposed. And being exposed without beads available, I don't think Half Devil is going to be allowed to even position himself to use that chalice anytime soon. Well, the second the purple's about to spawn, and they've got a ward down there to watch this rotation come out. So there's a chance for SK to potentially try and defend this. Lobster is level 5, as is Ratatoska. There could be a full rotation to the left-hand side here if they aren't careful. Oh, they're baiting it out. They know the rat's coming, landing right on top of Arkill, but he'll use the agility to escape. Trick's actually in trouble as he does get hit by that knockup. Has his sleepy time passive available? The dash will buy him enough time, but Arkill's in a bit of trouble. Going to use the knockup, and here's the rotation from Dig. Oh. Only level four was Cubo Fred not having the last breath to really make an impact. The rest of Dignitas, though, zeros around the corner, realizes with the threat being washed away, mm. can continue to farm. No, he's half devil there. Did use a shell as well, though, on that gank attempt with that rotation. He was a little bit worried that Kivo Fred was indeed level five at that point, so popped the shell early on, but now he's not going to be available when he is level five. Oh, trying to catch half devil, catches him during the first half of the rollout. First blood yep. going to the circuit. Oh, and it spread to fumble through the minions, too, just for good measure and help clear that wave up even more. But that one shell, I Actually, funny enough, I was mentioning it, and it came to fruition. It if he had Shelly, he might have lived. Might have lived. It would have been useful to buy some time, yeah. maybe have Fun Baller clean up the kill to Kivo Fred. On top of that, though, even without Last Breath, the damage of Death Pain, the damage of the basic attack to consume all the poisons is really high. So I still respect the decision that Half Devil did originally by using the shell. Variety in this lane, level six, now has the Warrior's Blessing fully topped up already, whereas Ducky still needs to continue working on that, making sure he gets a couple of auto attacks in here or there, or abilities, just to get the extra benefits from that amazing blessing. And that's going to be the advantage every single time for a ranged character versus a melee. Oh, yeah. You're able to poke from a distance and then just run away from the melee guy. 
you, nobody got to see that on camera. Nah, the way, I was running. The way Tolly did his running man was pretty funny. I was doing the running man impression. I oh, just on the spot. So five minutes in, Blue Buff dropped down the right hand side from Fails for, of course, Ducky. It was good to see SK go aggressive on the left hand side. They recognized the window. Just the execution was a little bit off. You can't just let your own purple buff go. So using your global, using your strengths to your advantage, Fails and Lobster did hit level five before Zeros and Kiva Fred was able to make that rotation. So it was a good timing window, but the problem was the Jingwei. Yeah. Our kill playing the Jing literally any other hunter gets knocked up there, has to preemptively beat to survive, but our kill is going to allow the knockup so that he can use the agility midair to even further yeah. himself away from the action. It's actually like dueling too, because even Trix had used the groggy strike to give himself knockup immunity as mm. well. So he really wouldn't have positioned anyone in an awkward spot. Kivo going to give a kiss to Fails, but Fails waited to kiss Lobster instead of walk towards Kivo. Now Kivo in a bit of trouble now without any CC, so has to use his ultimate, and that gets an auto Fails in response. One a for lot one. of return damage though, and without the Ratatasker global, there's a lot of freedom for Dignitas in the dual lane and also in the solo lane to do really what they want. Variety is continuing to be this big old bully. That's the one advantage you have a Jean Kui versus Amaterasu because your lane clear, Jean Kui, is also your sustain, mm -hmm. but you can't do the same exact thing as an Amaterasu. If you're maxing out the aura switcher, you're not going to have the lane clear. If anything, I think that. Place the SK a little bit more so, just because Cuba Fred in the early game gonna be looking for some early pressure if possible to get some pressure on these lanes. And him using his ultimate there, you know, answers that have fails, but it means fails can just farm up a little bit more to that mid game point. That's true. Cuba uh, Fred looking to play aggressive with the blink in general, so not having that ultimate up allows SK Gaming about 45 seconds remaining mm. to not have to worry about that jungle gang. So all you have to do is make sure you know when Cuba's speed buff is coming up and then understand where his rotational path will be. Dignitas in a bit more of an awkward spot than they were in the springtime here today. They need this one against SK, as always. They dropped a couple of games here and there throughout this split that may cost them the chance to come to the Summerland. But they're still in it for the time being. It depends how the rest of the week's games go. The problem is this is their last game of the Pro League, and they're going to have to rely on how the results go elsewhere if oh, they can find the wow. win. Wow, Cubo Fred coming in clutch to follow up from Variety. The synergy between these two is really working out, specifically the jean kui circuit combination. In their last previous set, it was also Variety playing the jean kui Ooh, Hunter battle, and it's crit versus, well, basically burst potential from those shards sticking out of Jigway's head. But under the tower on the right-hand side, they're looking for another kill. Kivo Fred's dot is doing work, but is it enough for a kill? Well, the death beam will make sure of that. I think he was still guaranteed dead from that last remaining tick, but better safe than sorry. Get the kill, get the tier one tower, allow your teammates to get that 500 gold, and Fails being dead allows some jungle pressure to Dignitas. Yeah, they get the tier one tower on the right hand side too, and it's all three kills the way of Cubo Fred, which is not something you would like to do for a circuit if you can. You want to try and keep her contained in the early game where possible. Allowing it to get a couple of kills online totally means that build's coming along and you get closer towards potentially going for some crit. The positioning is impressive. Cubo Fred flanking Ducky originally uh, forces someone. Doesn't necessarily have to be fails, but someone has to cover the lane to make sure that that experience is not going to waste, the gold's not going to waste. And unfortunately for fails, without his ultimate and only having purification beads, he couldn't avoid the follow-up damage from the last breath. And now it's a two-level lead for Cubo Fred as we tune into the dual lane. Trick sank. I'm going to put a bit more pressure on Fumble at where possible, but underneath the tower safely he is, and Half Devil going to make the rotation round. Has to be a little bit careful here. Purple Buff has spawned, and this is where we could see a bit of a contest, but cancel that. Dig going to take this time to base. There's just too many items that they want to finish. Trying to rush the Gauntlet of Thieves, the Strix Tank, just now finishing off Ninja Tab by his Arkel already Holy moly. sitting at 46 stacks I in know. the demo gloves. His Fun Ballers barely able to even catch up. That's a real awkward situation then for Fun Baller because down both Devos and, of course, Full Boots. Bit of an awkward situation. Lobster, meanwhile, though, makes a big play in mid lane, but doesn't manage to find any abilities. The apple does connect to Lobster off the wall, though, as Fails is under pressure and gets away oh. from the portal, but the tick damage is going to be enough to bring down the rat for Cubo's fourth kill. Variety making the rotation in the mid lane, forcing everyone to just scatter away as Lobster backs to base and Dignitas with another kill. All four kills going to the circuit as Cubo Fred having an MVP performance, extending this to even a speed buff invade. Yeah, the speed buff will be taken. Ducky's going to be here and find that's happened. But Ducky actually behind that of Cubo Fred now in this lane. A level down on a jungle is not somewhere you expect to be as a solo laner. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do much if you're Ducky because you're already 
building magical defense to deal with variety. So what good are you going to be against an actual physical? Very true. You don't even think about that one. That's always the hardest thing about solo, I guess, Tully. Because the old days, Balance. you were trying to get physical versus physical junglers. You used to Mostly. have to aim against both, right? And that's why in the old days, it would normally be a mystical male rush. And yeah. then if you're ever dealing with a hybrid between solo, jungle, magical, physical, or vice versa, you're going for the height of merchant. Zero's a little bit far forward there. Has to dash away in a good yawn from Trick. Sank slows him down, but fails. Goes to the sky. Looking to dunk down on Trick. Sank does that, but the apple from Zero's great shield from Half Devil. But Cubo's there for his variety. Fifth the game. The backline setting up Cubo Fred. The dots are ticking, but the shell just good enough to allow Half Devil to escape. Ducky gonna get rooted, trying to deter Variety from diving in. Man, Dignitas are on top of every little thing. Fails a little too ambitious. He wasn't really gonna find the kill on Trick and even if he did, forces him into the sleepy passive. And who from SK is gonna sit there? to hit the Kumakarna. And I guess that's the thing, they were just trying to bend the passive and get out, but a great apple from Zeros ends his life, plus Jibo Fred following up too, don't forget. And that ends up, you know, going worse for where than for SK. Instead of just slowly losing, they end up losing a goal period there too. Sometimes I understand the respect of trying to min-max your potential, including your out of task or ultimate. If you're feeling confident, you can land on with your ultimate, yep. still dash away to safety, rely on the, your Geb shield to bail you out. But at that point, a little too deep. I think that was a frustration play. Fails is like, I need to make yeah. something happen. Let me it. see what happens here. I do agree with that. So that happens a lot of the time. Where you're like, come on, let's just try and make something happen. But sometimes it can just be worse of a deficit. I guess it's awkward because as a caster, you're always like, come on, you got to try and make something happen. Then you do a play like that and you're like, oh, wow, that didn't really work out. Yeah. But it is looking like SK is trying to catch Dignitas in the jungle here. A couple of space and times from Lobster now in a row, trying to fire around the map and find a potential somebody out of position. Dignitas just too aware of it, really. Doesn't really hit anyone. And I'm curious why he's just throwing it out for the damage instead of allowing the portals to be used for either engaging or escaping. The rest of SK weren't really following up on the portals for pressure. Instead, Dignitas just patiently waited around to see if anyone would take the portals because Dignitas has a very commanding experience yeah. lead outside of even the gold. So very difficult to really fight into this for the chaos side. And this is a situation where Dignitas are like, okay, you're not going to fight us anymore. We can't really get any more towers. We've already taken mid on the right-hand side and Arkel's going to get the left eventually. Let's just take the Pyromancer. They're not going to come and contest us. Keep pushing this lead. It's so difficult to contain Cubo Fred, and he was able to just burst this lead wide open, sitting at 5-0-1 with a cooldown reduction, with some extra protections and movement speed from the Masamune. It's not looking pretty for SK to prevent the circuit from already popping off. Fails in the jungle, stole away the red, but gets caught in the jungle. Lots of damage, but not enough to find a kill just yet. Those poison ticks won't be enough at the moment to bring him down. Could have maybe just used last breath and that would have been it. Didn't really need That's the true. Cobra's Kiss, but either way, saving the ulti for a rainy day. Still has Blink available to set himself up for literally anyone else that he wants. Could force beads out from Lobster and camp this Giannis. The last checklist is to shut down one of these hybrid carries between Lobster and Funballer if Dignitas wants to win out. Well, Kiva Fred's now on this left-hand side and Funball is on his way back to a very weakened tower. Gonna walk in the jungle and place a ward. And now he's Kiva Fred there, so that tier one tower will go down on the left. But Variety in middle of his own at the moment, trying to take on the world, but he's got reinforcements if required. Doesn't matter if he's playing Kamazat, Kakolin, or Zhang Kui, he's always 1v3, 1v4 <laughs> in some team. Yeah, always did it. Well, Variety's one of the original Zhang players of old back in the early days. Oh, that's true. He used to always be the one that brought out. When, when Variety started to struggle a little while, because he used to play a lot of healers. You know, the Afro, the Changa, mm -hmm. his Ra. The season two dig days. Well, it was the season one days when he was actually on Worth. Um, oh, okay. So, Team Coast, sorry, not Worth. They were Worth Gaming, then they were Team Coast. But Coast Gaming, like, when he was playing there, Ra, Changa, and Aphrodite were his go-tos, and he started to have a bit of an issue where Mages in the solo didn't really work anymore, and he tried out the Zhonga Donga, trying to bring him back to fruition. So he's had it in his god pool for a long, long time. And now, obviously, with the buffs to him, the extra protections, and the extra damage, and the easy stacking, my oh my, is Zhonga flying now. It's, it's working out very well, especially when you have a relatively easy matchup against the Warrior. Like, the idea of Ducky playing the Amaterasu was not to counter the Zhang Queen necessarily in lane. It was more about being a more influential factor team for team fights. Because yeah. the mobility from Giannis is good. You add an Amaterasu on top, even better. 
Bro, you're going to get stunned and Fumbola jumps in to try and help out, bring down Zhong, but Trixx hangs around the corner. Trix brings to the back and goes for an up, but Fumbola beads that away. Now rooted in place, his fail jumps up and down, and across the map comes the space and time as well, as Giannis is here to try and clean this up, but Kubo's already got Fumbola. Shell was used, but Ducky's still very low. Great disengage from Kubo, Fred. Trix takes out the little Bray's rat. Still alive. Laps are very low. Variety trying to survive as best as he can. And now around the corner comes Zeros, and that relieves the pressure on Variety to escape. Half Devil may get out too, but the Yawn on Ducky's gonna slow him down and leave Lobster exposed as Zeros. Give him went back in after Kubo. being at 5% health. The synergy behind Dignitas to be able to get out. Come back in. They wow. don't even need Arco for this team fight. He was busy getting two towers of his own. I was about to say, meanwhile, all that's going on when Fumbola did rotate to that fight. Arkill got a tier two tower. And not only that, Dignitas win the fight and take a tier two on the right hand side. 15 minutes or 16 minutes in, I should correct myself. There is only one tier two tower standing for SK Gaming. This is looking like an 85% fan voted game from Dignitas performing 10 and 0. Well Solid. over 10,000 gold in the lead, sitting at about 14,000. Wow. So tell me, like, honestly, I'm going to talk to you about some of your pro days. It's been a while since your pro days, man. But I do want to bring up, like, when you guys, you had games that didn't matter because, A, you couldn't qualify or whatever, right? Sure. That happened to everybody. What do you do in these sort of games? Like, how do you, do you, do you look towards the future? Is that what you're trying to do with these games to try and fix the issues or show that you can compete with them? What's the real mindset going into them? You're pretty much uh, kind of th figuring out what's going to work in the future, whether it's trying to stop the opposition, like what's our strengths, what's our right. weaknesses? Do we need to focus more about improving our own individual gameplay or do we need to understand that whatever the enemies are throwing us that we just can't handle? So it's a mixture of figuring out that little bit of balance. And for my days, whenever we're ever struggling, we're always trying to figure out our own individual mistakes as right. opposed to stopping the enemies. Right. And I guess with that, like you, you experiment a little bit, try and fix some of the issues you've had gone by. But I guess in this game, it's kind of awkward with SK being so far behind now to do much of that in this one. The Fire Giant could be underway, and it is indeed. Dignitas on that is Kivo. Fred going to... Make sure he zones away the tankiest target on the team that SK are offer at the moment in Ducky at level 14 with the Breastplate of Valor. Fumbola will try and chip away at a tier 1 tower. It's getting awkward for SK of what to do next. Yeah, Kivo Fred was just being Kivo Fred. Just zoning away Ducky was very unnecessary. But even a tanky solo laner can't handle how fat Kivo Fred yeah. currently is in this game state. It's not looking pretty in game one of the set. Yeah, it's looking like a Kivo Fred MVP game just because of how he started. Five kills yes. at the start of the game. Now he's on seven, looking for number eight. Lobster will be number eight. The Aegis won't buy him enough time to take away that bleed. He even tries the banish route to avoid some of that damage, but it won't be enough. The rest of Dick, though, will take a tier two tower. I'm not sure if how that interacted was correct, but I think that because he was midair upon the poison explosion, it didn't spread. I'm not sure if anyone was close enough to him anyway. Might but happen, yeah. That was uh, an interesting little interaction. Without any remaining towers, Dignitas looking for their first Phoenix, but they're not going to concentrate on one individual one. They're going to go for a little bit of a split. Well, it's because SK have only really gone way back in by grouping up here, but at the same time, if they group up, that could cause some problems too. And that's exactly what they're going for. Tricks and yawns on Ducky. Phoenix is already dead. And meanwhile, SK just had to roll out back towards the fountain to heal up. Right side is looking very clean. Middle needs to be the next one. Needs to wait for the minion wave to eliminate some backdoor protection. But they don't need to do that if they're going to find some picks. Ducky's already below half health before he can get his ultimate off. He will do so, though. And in comes Fails looking for the kill onto Zeros. Spin to win. will pick up the kill. And he gets to the sky in time away from the danger. The first kill on the board for SK, but they're whittled down on low Man, health. Zeros, what a feeder that guy is. Lobster is going to fall to Kivo Fred. And I like the engage that Ducky did. He put himself out there, yep. baiting out so many defensive relics. That's the kind of play Ducky needed to do earlier on about rotating in the mid lane. So Rendevo out from SK here. I can completely understand that, waiting for game two to begin. Half Devil will go down to Kivo Fred and 10 kills to the circuit in the jump. 13 to 1, sitting at 10, 0, and 2. Part of. 12 of the 13 total, not even 20 minutes into the game. Dignitas still looking very dominant. They did look very good, but 
SK, man, there was just nothing they could get going there. I, I got the idea of the fails ult in the mid lane, but from that moment on, it was like, well, this game is done. Let's move on to game two. Since they couldn't find the kills in the first purple buff invade, that's when things started to turn around. When Cuba Fred was able to turn that gank around eventually, making his rotation in the dual lane, finding the kill onto Half Devil once the shell was already down, and then taking that little bit of a lead into the solo lane to shut down Ducky, shutting down Fails that was trying to cover for Ducky. It was just a cyclical effect. So who do you guys at home think deserves MVP for that game? There's only one person. I know, that's what I'm There's like. only it's, one person. It's a really weird question to ask because everyone should be pretty much voting for it as well. I will talk back to the start of the game though, SK Gaming. They were the ones with the initial gank. I like the idea about the exploited Dignitas being overextended, but it wasn't good enough. It just wasn't enough. They needed to figure out a way to really use their globals correctly. I understand that they were getting pressured in the purple buff, but not being level 5 for potentially Half Devil could hurt, not having the Cataclysm. I think maybe they could have tried to look at Variety a little bit, starting at Boots 1, not having any sort of defenses with Breastplate because of the cost increase from 500 to 600. That could have been a good target because Variety left on check as a Jean Kui, not a pleasant thing to deal with in the mid game. Well, let's get back to the desk to break down that game 1 in a bit more detail and also check out Game 2's picks and bats. Thanks a lot, friends. Tom and Taco back in the place to be. You guys remember FG3000? That guy was cool. Anyway, <clears throat> Dignitas win this one. SK don't. Well, while you're busy reminiscing, I'm sure that this is a match that SK wish they could forget because that one was a bit of a doozy, if we're being honest. I, I mean, there's just only so much that I think SK could have done by that end point. This one was just fast-paced from the get-go. Dignitas not really wasting any time. Managed to set up the map pressure from the very beginning and... Once they get a hold of it, I mean, SK, did, they just felt so lost. Yeah, just couldn't really do it. I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes things are very simple. Uh, Cubo Fred is the MVP, 10-0 and 2. 10-0 and 2. Um, he had a KDA of 11.0. Um, his gold per minute, actually. This is a stat that we rarely focus on because there's so many different variables. 679 I mean like I know you don't know the exact average taco but like what are you used to seeing in that gold per minutes category definitely somewhere closer to around 483 <laughs> as like that's like a pretty decent amount I mean yeah. you're looking at like 540 on like closer to the high end of things and yep. so uh, this amount of like GPM I mean th it was it was absurd if, if there's just nowhere else can to I, really describe can I that. Show you